All right. We're in the right place. Sweet. Well, no, that's yesterday. We're not in the right place. We're not. We should be. I thought we saw. I thought I saw it. Uh -uh. I just have to. There we go. The internet's <laughs> slow. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hey guys. What's up? Welcome Hi. In. How's it going? Hey. Good to see you. Just got home from work like an hour ago. We just did a meditation. Try to get focused. <laughs> Today was like my eighth day in a row. My eighth day working in a row. So don't mind me if I'm like falling asleep over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can give it a Give it a moment like we have been. Yeah, um, just because you never know. <laughs> just curious. Uh, did you guys ever have the opportunity to look into the 100 and 104 hertz uh, binaural beats? I fell asleep. You last did? Last night. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get to listen to it for very long. It's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. We just started doing it like every day when we get home from work, like the recently. Oh, you did? That's great. We do it at night. We always do it at night. We always meditate before bed. We we each put on we put on our own headphones usually. Yeah. So uh since you did it, uh what are your thoughts on it? Just give it a couple more minutes. I think sometimes with that. Um, like with something like that, like it takes a couple times. Like, cause there's some times where you're just not able to focus as well as others. You know what I mean? Not to stay sure. as alert or to keep your mind, your, your thoughts from, from popping in. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I have a hard time quieting out, um, quieting my mind. Yeah. Not all the time. But <clears throat> Excuse me. It's just, it's not always that you can get as deep as you can sometimes. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, it's definitely one of those circumstances when you when you go into listening to things like the binaural beats that um, you, you got to, like, kind of uh, envelop yourself into it. So it, it's, and when you envelop yourself into it, you, find, you feel yourself kind of becoming the frequency itself. And that's what, that's what happened to me the other night, which is why I wanted to tell you guys about it. I, I, it was, um, I felt like I was, uh, being slung shot out and back into my body. And, uh, I thought that was a really neat sensation. Um, because back, uh, during quarantine, when I was doing a lot of meditation and trying to work on having this, uh, astro projection or out of body experience, I found myself, uh, having very similar sensations like I did with the binaural beats. And I, I thought that was uh, pretty cool. So um, the other night, the other two nights ago, I did a, hypno a hypnosis that was like that. It was a voice instead of the music, the voice was in both ears and it was going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty um, effective in changing my state of awareness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's hard to it's hard to tell like um what the result would be since I didn't do it more than once yet. Yeah. It is pretty cool. I didn't realize that they mixed them together. I mean, I've studied a little bit about hypnotherapy. Um, but I didn't realize that they could do, you know, do it like that. I mean, it makes sense. They do it for um ASMR videos, yeah. so they have ASMR hypnotherapy too, so that makes sense. So I uh, see we got another person in. Uh, we'll go ahead and start here. Who's the uh, other person that's in here to, uh, today? Hi. Um. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's all good. Mm -hmm. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, I've really considered taking uh, QHHT a couple times. I just haven't had the cash all at once to do it. She doesn't take smaller payments. So it's like $600 twice. And I just haven't had it like that. Um, but that's actually probably going to be my next certification. Yeah. Hi, Mike. How are you doing today? Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, it might be hard to tell who we're talking to at some point since there's only, since there's only two of you, really, there's three of you, but two, two separate, uh, Facebook accounts, it might not be too hard, but if uh, either one of you could figure out, <clears throat> if you leave this video and go right above it, it says streamyard.com backslash Facebook. If you put your name in there, hey. we'll be able to tell. <laughs> Hi. Welcome in. Just Thanks for time. joining us. Yeah, we didn't Thank really you. get started yet. We were just babbling about binaural mm -hmm. beats. So, uh, yeah, guys, welcome in here. Um, I'm actually kind of excited to talk about this uh, content tonight. Um, I wanted to start off uh, tonight's uh, class with uh, religious trauma syndrome. Um, as I spoke briefly the other night, uh, the first the first night I was raised in a very devout Christian home and I just kind of wanted to break down um, the reasons why I feel that this is important to bring into awareness. Um, not that everybody suffers from religious trauma syndrome who was raised in a home, uh, a Christian home, um, but people, even though they're not there are, there are people that are still in the faith and there are people who leave it because people, I guess, feel different kinds of sensations. Um, as Alan Watts put it, many Christian has admitted to falling short. Uh, I fall short of the example of Jesus. And as long as you continue to admit that to yourself, you are... It's thinking you're unworthy. It's unworthiness. Uh, Probably it's, fear and shame, too. It's all kinds of things. Um, but as long as you admit that, you're okay. Because the Christian faith, specifically, you know, like I'm not saying that any other ones haven't, but we're just going to stick with the Christian mythology um, because it's so predominant, especially in this part of the world. Um, but what he says is Christianity has constitutionalized guilt as a virtue. So as long as you admit that you are unworthy, the better you are. And this strips us completely of all of our self-worth, our self-love, our ability to have self-respect uh, and, and you know, because everything is exterior. Everything that uh, matters, um, all power that exists is always from somewhere else. Mm. And People are left to feel very small and insignificant, as it's even stated in Scripture. We are nothing but filthy rags in the eyes of God. Um, that's a horrible, uh, um, very depressing way to see your existence here on Earth. Uh, with with one life to get it right, you spend your entire life with this perpetual anxiety, trying to measure up to something you'll never be worthy of having, which is grace and the, the father's love and really the way i interpret that specific scripture weird of them but filthy rags i think you know doctrines have, have you know the, the canons have been mis you know uh, uh, reinterpreted and, and altered multiple times but uh you know i wouldn't say that um the way when you say when it's written that we're nothing but filthy rags. I mean, we're talking about spirit. In the purest form, in the purest of light, in the purest of all things that are spiritual and all things that are harmonious and and um, and divine, these these skin suits that we wear and the way that um, uh, you know we diseases and you know the the things that is just just the 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 body itself is but a flesh or a flesh sorry a a, a a dirty rag you know it's because it's 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 something that is totally 
um, opposite of what be uh, of of uh, spirit. It, oh, not spirit. I'm sorry. I'm losing track of my words here. I apologize. But it, it's something that's totally opposite to what is divine. But though the body contains divinity, and yeah, because you <laughs> want to know what fixes that when you are feeling that way to drop into your body. Right. It's right. by a trauma is you know uh, trauma work is body centered work. You know, it's not centered in the mm -hmm. mind. You know, and that's I I guess that just makes perfect sense. You know. But yeah, you know, it's it's if if you you know imagine spirit as as a brilliant light, and then you look at the you know the body. You know, not that the body isn't something disgusting, but would you know w w if you had the choice right now to be spirits, you know, or experience like that that pure uh, um, singularity and in, in, in its rawest, most you know uh, purest form, in comparison to you know, being in the body, you know, most people would, I guess, most people would choose to, you know, leave the struggles and the torments and the traumas and stuff of, of the, in, in the ego of, of the body. So like, you know, I, I think it's more of a mental state, you know, to think that. Yeah. Cause the body is also a bridge between the, the physical and the non-physical. And I, exactly. I think that's what they're trying to push you away from knowing. Right. 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 I think that um, there's a lot of things that are, divinely inspired there's nothing wrong with the body no no there's nothing wrong with the body i mean we we are it's not like it's evil or anything like right. it's actually one the greatest tool we have in in this realm and they just don't want us to learn how to use it right you know um, for the right way the right the way to use it so you know i there, there's all kinds of different same thing with your imagination exactly <laughs> exactly um but uh the trauma, the religious trauma, that as uh, as I was saying, is is basically bringing you down to a point where you feel completely hopeless, and you're always going to be hopeless unless you confess your unconditional love and and, and surrender your hearts and, and sacrifice basically yourself to having a relationship with something that you know nothing about they want even though that's not present they would look they 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 say that this is the only way the only thing worth dying for and it's it's uh i can i can speak from from experience that the way of growing up in a Christian home made me feel very uncomfortable because I felt that there was so much more to it. I just knew that you like just intrinsically as a child and, you know, as a child, I, I questioned a lot of the things except for the teachings that came from Jesus, which was basically love without prerequisites. It was, you know, it, there was, there was no judgment. There was, you know, there, it was all about coming together helping your fellow man you know being unity. an example unity yeah you know expressing love and and in and any way in every way possible um and that's something that we just don't see from people um you know and if and if they a majority at least that i grew up around if they were doing good deeds it was to earn their way into the into heaven you know the, the some paradise in the afterlife and so it wasn't genuine that, you know, like, uh, they, they were, they were being a genuine fake by doing something to earn something, you know, it didn't come from the heart. It came from, you know, earning some kind of reward for doing something. And when anybody like even us, you know, when we do that with another person, it doesn't feel as good when someone does that, hoping to receive something from you when you ask someone else for a favor. Because then you're like, well, you know, if I knew you were going to expect something back from me, you know, like in that manner, you know, and, and that's how I grew up around that a lot, too, which made it difficult for me to ask other people for help growing up because I always was expecting them to want something back for me if I asked them for a favor. Um, uh, it, it's a. Uh, Oh, there's all kinds of different avenues. I just wanted to touch on that briefly because what we are taught, I'm going to try to slow down a little bit because I get carried away really fast, like I said last night. 
Um, breathe. What we are taught here, though, is we are children of God, and he loves us very much. But, and it's always the but that follows the feeling that we are here on probation, that we truly are not worthy of what we have been given, but we are demanded and expected to give everything that we have because according to God, without him, we would not exist. But that wasn't created to keep people under control. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. And if you oh, don't get man. it right, if you don't get it right and you don't give what is demanded of you, <laughs> then, well, you suffer eternal torment in the other place and, you know, separate from God. And, uh, you know, it's it's just, like I said, perpetual anxiety. It, it makes one live in absolute fear about getting only one chance to get life correct in the uh, not in your believed, eyes i never <laughs> believed them people i didn't believe them people when i was five years old i went to catholic school for 12 years and i didn't believe any of the stuff they said even when i was little i just kind of went through the motions like a good little girl because i'm a well-behaved <laughs> little girl you know that's it like i just behaved <laughs> for my parents and i just did what i was supposed to do they didn't force us to go to church thank god <laughs> but like i just i struggled in school i would get kicked out for like asking questions yeah because i would just continue to ask questions like but come on like that doesn't make any sense to me and then they'd get all flustered and throw me out no well, it, it happened to me too i mean i asked questions too and i got in trouble as well you know so then i just stopped paying attention altogether <laughs> <laughs> and the so the reason i wanted to tap on that real quick is because eastern philosophy is a whole different ball game and a lot of people especially more recently have been looking to eastern philosophy um because it offers something a lot more comforting um you know when it comes well, to taoism buddhism hinduism well you know what that is it's reincarnation that it offers exactly it, you know the ring that people love the the uh Everything idea. has more meaning when there's more than when the soul goes on, when it's not just this puny little existence, when it's not just this time around and it's so short in the blink of an eye. Once you realize that, you know, your soul is eternal, it's like, oh, wow. You yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> that's another reason why they don't <laughs> tell you that. I mean, mystic Christians and mystic Jews have always believed in reincarnation. Shh, nobody tell the evangelists <laughs> because they just can't handle that. I don't know. Uh, and it's strange how, uh, just speaking from experience again, it, it's strange how uh, watching people react to the topic of, of reincarnation because they get very uncomfortable. And, and what I what I uh, what I saw was that people feel very like you know this specific mythology. The people that believe in it like feel very uncomfortable because they are earning something by all the things that they do all the, the every going to church every sunday committing to that you know the tithing giving their money to god you know there's that you know and all the you know charities and the you know uh, uh what do you call it um volunteer work and all that stuff that they do they do it to get into heaven to get into heaven <laughs> and the people who are doing any of this and who don't commit to these things and dedicate themselves to these practices um have equal right to them they, they they feel that well the people who do wrong should burn in hell forever and we should be rewarded for our dedication to a life of following god's commandments that's just a and, ploy to get you to waste your whole life <laughs> and it's it's really it's 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 really sad the 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 brainwashing that uh we have been under you know in this part of the world um the, the the way in which we have been conditioned to believe the things that we believe because there are two dominant mythologies the, the one i've already been talking about mm -hmm. christianity and then there's the scientific one which is that the universe is an orphan it had no father or mother and we are a spontaneous random fluke way on the end of some galaxy and our life has absolutely no meaning or purpose and I think we're getting to the point right now in, in our growth and our evolution consciously that we are sick of the both of these narratives because we feel innately that there is something more to all of this. And the Eastern philosophies 
give you an example or at least teach you how to tap into that because that thing that we feel innately that there's more that there's more to me there's more to all of this and and my experience in it has something more to it as well so they teach you you know in in Taoism Buddhism Hinduism and so on you know, that it's the divinity the divine spark is in you and uh, we talked about this last night briefly in the ba uh, Bhagavad Gita and uh, it, they said that it's about ego too it is mm -hmm. and I think it's about ego in the way that like it's kind of a metaphor a lot of stuff in the Bible and like is the is a metaphor for um, like Kundalini energy and like the whole um, you know the chemistry bit of de of having an ego death you know what I mean and and um and bringing your what your chi or whatever you want to call it whichever word you want to prana whatever word you want to mm. use for it um and and connecting all of your energy centers um a lot of people think that that's what the bible a lot of the bible is based on and and i it's probably true i mean that's what the i mean that's what um the tree of life is all about and the the um the kabbalah you know so I wouldn't be surprised if that was part of, you know, Christianity back in the day. Like, you know what I mean? That they all stem from that tradition. It's just at one point they flipped it, you know, flipped the script. Yeah. Well, I mean, Christianity basically, well, the, the Catholic church, the Roman Catholic church basically said, okay, Jesus Christ is the son of God, but let us stop right there. <laughs> no one else is allowed to be. Nobody else is allowed to be because anybody else who has this mystical experience, then everybody's going to think they can, and then we won't be able to control anybody. Like if <laughs> if somebody had a spiritual awakening, I'm going to get to the mystical experience in just a little bit. Um, but if somebody had this mystical experience down in the Bible Belt, the only way they would know how to express this this incredible divine experience is by proclaiming that He's Jesus Christ. Because he feels fundamentally that he has embodied something and it's divine. And the only way he can relate to this feeling is by uh, uh, relating it to the best example that he's grown up in. Uh, you know, and uh, same thing with uh, Hindus. When they had this, this divine experience, it's coming into unity with Krishna. Same thing with Buddhists, and so like so, it, it's the, all of these prophets, all of these are are descended masters, whatever you want to call them. Really, it, they're sons of God, just like we all are. But uh, they had a type of consciousness that was elevated. You know, it was it was a it was a cosmic consciousness, and they were a they came here basically to say, "Hey, wake up, man!" <laughs> so, um, and when I when I, when I was uh going through the Bhagavad Gita, like I, I saw how very easily that Christ and Krishna and Buddha all were very, very easily the same person, the same consciousness or pe just people, just people who elevated to the same type of consciousness. And what's true for them is true for all of us. We can all get there. It's just a matter of you know what else is funny? They said the only way to prove it is they is to for, perform a miracle. And right, but look at all the saints that did perform miracles and they only became saints. They weren't allowed to be sons and daughters of God. You know what I mean? There were people that were able to freaking make miracles happen. And guess what? Most of them were killed for it. You know, but you know, I've Joan had, of Arc. I've had people uh, I've had people ask for me to prove it you know to do a miracle myself you know because of the podcast i used to do i had all kinds of people i talked to people from all over the world and some of Francis these people of Assisi. some of these people would get uh pretty upset <laughs> and she she first podcast she dropped in on <laughs> I, I, I got, would, guys <laughs> i have no control over my temper sometimes i'm a lot i'm getting better i'm getting a lot better Phew, man, I don't have the patience for that nonsense. But people always, they always want proof. You know, they perform a miracle. I'm like, yeah. why are you on here? Are you with these people? <laughs> I'm stressed out. You're giving me anxiety. <laughs> Alan, <laughs> Alan Watts uh, actually was asked to prove, prove that he was uh, where he was at, con you know, in consciousness. And he said the wicked, the, the, 
the corrupt and wicked right. gen, the wicked and corrupt generation seeketh the sign and no sign shall be given <laughs> you know and that was his that was his reply <laughs> to somebody asking for proof and you know just you know and what we got to do really you know when you know if we get to this place you know where we you know discover this about ourselves and we want to we want to have we want to give and reach out a helping hand to those people and we just got you know we got to keep our composure you know not let uh ourselves react you know to people who are like that because uh according to carl young we were just listening to this that that, that that's shadow projection you know and people are always going to shadow project their insecurities their unworthiness their their self-doubt and so on and so on onto you if you challenge the narrative that they believe in um and that some that's, people turn into downright narcissists well i mean that's yeah yeah they I, snap uh, well they're pushed into it a lot i mean i'm not saying every person is but a lot of people like yeah, they just, just start throwing insults at you because you don't have the same point of view as them it's it's wild it's uh yeah that's pretty wild yeah <laughs> <laughs> you um, sheeple like what <laughs> oh that's another thing i don't know if i if i said this to you guys i am like really really against the idea of chosen people i'm really really against the idea that any human beings are better than any other human beings in the face of the planet in the eyes of anybody ever mm -hmm. and i can't stand that like self-righteous bullshit about how you know you're asleep and we're awakened and we're the chosen ones and blah 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 it's a whole bunch of bullshit that's really how I feel. <laughs> yeah, so we're what we want to. Uh, we're well, all we, chosen. We're all we're we're all exactly. If you have life, if your heart is beating and you are breathing and you are a living being, then you are chosen. There's no. I have. I, I don't know what all this hundred and forty four thousand chosen people thing is. That's like really circulating and getting very popular on the internet. I mean, I know where well, it comes from. Yeah. But I. Dolores Cannon. Um, everyone thinks they're part of the 144,000. Yes. Well, the, that, that number came Millions. from, that <laughs> number came from, um, the, from the Jews. That's what the number that, that was in the Bible, the 144,000 chosen one. But Dolores is, Dolores never said anything about 144,000. She said waves of volunteers and everybody turned, they took the two things and smashed them together. But that's because, I mean, the new age movement has been hijacked by the church clearly because people are like running from one to the other and back again. And they're all toxic. You know what I mean? Not everybody, of course, but like a lot of that is what's going on where they're like, the things are blending together and it's just, yeah, it's all the same type of programming. You know the what I mean? Age, it's yeah. all the same type of program. And I'm not saying that Dolores didn't, um, you find this out from people's higher selves in hypnotherapy. I believe she probably did. I mean, that's pretty much why I want to learn QHHT. I, I think hypnotherapy is fantastic. Is um is is amazing. It's interesting, and it's definitely something I believe in. But it's just the way people take that stuff and run with it, like it's written in stone. And like now, all of a sudden, they're positive because they want to be so bad. They are one of the chosen ones, and like just. It's just like, whoa, with the spiritual ego. We got to turn that shit down, people, just a little bit. That's, um, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I, I don't have anything against Christianity, and I don't have anything against this New Age movement. I just don't like what, do what people have done to both of them. I have thing with bypassing is what I have, and not taking responsibility for your shit. I hate what, I, I just don't like what people have done to these two beliefs and i don't like what they do to themselves by believing that it's true um i don't like it when they tell other people what they have to believe it's, or make laws about other people when it comes to, like i just i'm sorry like i don't think um, that's a correct thing to do i don't and by saying i don't like what what by saying what i, I don't like by believing that it's true it, it's 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 by like what she said by just going with everything in a literal sense and then suddenly feeling that in some way that you are superior by accepting that that is the concrete, think, absolute, universal If you truth. think you're su su superior in any way, this is my opinion, my humble opinion. I will always be a, a, a student. I will never, I will always be an apprentice. You know, I've heard that, you know, um, because I don't think that anybody that has any kind of superiority over another, even if they are a lot higher in consciousness, they would never look at it that way. 
you know, they would at least be, you know, I think people that get that far have to learn how to humble themselves far more Absolutely. than that, you know? Absolutely. Um, so who, who here uh, knows what the, you know, anything about the spiritual experience? Like some people call it Kudalini. Some people call it spiritual awakenings. Uh, there's many different names for this experience, but it's universal. Um, it doesn't matter what religion you belong to. It happens to anybody at any given moment spontaneously. Um, the only reason why I ask is because what I really feel what our purpose here is as human beings is uh, to awaken. And I don't mean awaken from the matrix, <laughs> you know, like we don't live in a computer simulated reality. Like oh, this is like this whole, this whole thing is blowing up all over the internet too. Like I got to escape the 3d matrix and, you know, <laughs> we're not here to escape anything. We are here no, to... No, that would be here, be here for if we were supposed to escape it. This ain't the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are definitely... I mean, I think that there's likely that they're trying to turn it into the Hunger Games, but it isn't the Hunger Games. But we... <laughs> we're not here to escape anything, but we are here to awaken to our potential, to our divine unity. Um, which is like escaping the illusion of Maya, you know, according to Hinduism, you know, the, there's the illusion of Maya. We do escape that, that, uh, there is an illusion that we have to escape, but it's not outside of us. It's, yeah, it it's our own illusion that happens from our programming, from the way, from just from the way our perception is designed. No, we, uh, we are all brought into this world and we're put under some type of, hypnosis like uh is that the right word yeah it's it's a forgetting an amnesia an amnesia yeah you know a forgetting and we're here to re-remember we're here to rediscover mm. what that is which we really are and unlearning and an, and a remembering mm -hmm. remembering and unlearning yeah so that that's the reason why i was asking about you know if, if you had any knowledge about it um and, uh, you know, back in right before quarantine hit, um, well, it wasn't before quarantine. It was before COVID became a pandemic. It was still in China. Right around that time, late December 2019, uh, it, it, that's what happened to me. It hit me and hit me hard. And what when it hits you, you know it, you know. And because you go one per one moment you're this one person and you have these judgments and you have these perspectives and you have these likes and these dislikes and then suddenly you're thrown into this sudden moment of uh, sensation of absolute expansion and singularity where suddenly everything matters and at the same time nothing matters there's no greater this, better that, no wrong this and right that. It's, I've never experienced that exactly. I never, unless I was on drugs. I never did, <laughs> honestly, honestly, hallucinogens. Um, I had a feeling like that, but it wasn't like one instant I was different and one instant I changed. I gradually got like that the more and more sober I got. The closer and closer I came to feeling like that, naturally, every day on my own. But that wasn't, it wasn't like an instant thing like for you. The only time that ever happened to me was when I was on a lot of LSD. <laughs> well, I mean, it happened, honestly, from from my understanding, it happens to everybody at one point in their life or another in different levels. Hmm. And people can disregard it as like uh, just, something like you know they don't really know what it is but it really doesn't matter and they'll shove it aside and they really won't contemplate on the significance of that moment um and then uh for some like it, it's an elevation that's absolutely cosmic um i don't know really where mine lies you know i i don't try to at all in any kind of way compare it to yeah. lower or higher because it was beautiful and it was divine in the way that it happened and but what I can tell you is that 
I saw exactly what I am and who I thought that I was was totally dead. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, I had the entire time during quarantine to develop this, to discover this, to go in deep into this through esoteric, you know, uh, manuscripts and, and, you know, to, to build myself and learn exactly, well, if this is what I am, then that's what everybody else is too, because, I can't exist in this universe that is divinely created being a divine being and nothing else, or at least there's a lack of divinity out here in the world that everything is divine and everything is exactly the way it needs to be. And there's no error in any of it. Creation creates error by putting the concept of what error is onto something else. So and that's that metaphysical law again. <laughs> It's true. It's true. It's the metaphysical law. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just having fun. I'm just... You're <laughs> laughing at me. No, I'm not. I don't know. No, I'm not. You're right. I'm not saying you're wrong. Oh, I know. I'm not saying you're wrong. But there is still right and wrong. I'm sorry. If you're in a body, there's right and wrong. You can't just like, it's not like you can kill people and be like, but there's really no right and wrong. Like, come on. You got to be careful. People will take that seriously and run with it. They'll be like, yeah, nothing's I'm... wrong. I'm not offering bypassing by, uh, of course by saying not. that, you of know, course I'm, not. I'm saying that on a, course, on a deeper, that. <laughs> I'm not saying you think that, um, I'm <laughs> saying that, uh, when you get to, when you get to a certain point though, um, non, uh, yes, there, there is right and wrong. Yes. You know, there, there is, we have the free will to make decisions. Free will is another and, tough one. It makes my brain turn into a pretzel. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's, like I said earlier, you know, what was true for these prophets, these messiahs, these, you know, the, these Buddhas, these Christs, these Krishnas, you know, like um, what's true for them is true for all of us. And what we uh, what Angela and I really want to offer is a tangible road to a deeper level of insight, you know, and um, I, I truly have confidence that, uh, you know, through this program. That through what we've learned and through, uh, you know, being in a, in a very, on a very narrow road of mindfulness, there are more doors for, for not just for you, but, you know, for all of us can open up, you know, this, this is a team effort, you know, we are all walking each other home as Ram Das said. Exactly. So. That's what we are here to do. You know, we just are... having you guys on here going back and forth in the <laughs> conversations. I'm learning, you know what right, I mean? Right. And this is what we enjoy. Like, you know, the, the interaction to reach out and be a service to others. But I also can tell you the steps that I took to get from feeling a certain way to get to a better place and to go from a place of having a small world perception to having total complete insight and being able to perceive the world in a different way, but with radical honesty through some steps and some radical honesty. And, and it's absolutely um, a path that you could take to transformation. And there's a lot of paths other people have, um, you know, that are similar that other people have used. There are other examples of it out there, but um, you know, I just felt like it would be really beautiful to create something that, um, was made out of the things that I love the best about my journey and putting it together for other people so that they don't have to like run all over trying to find stuff that fits their personality and that they're into, you know, there would be people enough like us where they'd be interested in the same types of things. And we could just kind of like, you know, create this whole experience for us all to go through together. Radical honesty is admitting, like being willing to con consider that you might be wrong about your opinion of yourself. You know what I mean? Being able to be like, it happened to me, but did I really do anything to like perpetuate that? Like being, being radically honest with yourself to the point where, you know, most people would, would walk away from it. They probably wouldn't sit and a lot of people don't want to be that honest with themselves and really struggle with being that honest with themselves. Um, you know, you know, when you feel really stubborn and like you don't want to admit something to yourself and you want to cry because you're so stubborn, you don't even want to admit it. And then you get annoyed at yourself like that. But being honest with yourself anyway, even though it's uncomfortable and being like, yeah, 
I absolutely am contributing to that because I'm being jealous or because I'm being selfish or, you know, it's that's those things that you don't want to admit about yourself. Cause we all have like those moments that we're not proud of where we're like, uh, I was acting pretty greedy or I was acting, so, you know, selfish or, you know, which whatever have you, we all have those moments where we're less than what we, we know we could be. We're less than what we know we should be even at our darkest moments, you know, we, you know, and it's, but it's also being able to not, it's about the radical honesty, but it's also about that radical self-acceptance, being able to accept that yourself as you are without blame or shame or guilt. Um, it's, it's a process and I, that I believe if we are, are committed to self-growth and self-awareness that we work on consistently for the rest of our lives. Like, I don't think that's something that's ever over. I was doing it right before we got, right before we turned this on, I was doing, um, we did um, a, a meditation. I put on a guided meditation to release resistance because I felt a lot of resistance today. All sorts of stupid things were going on. You know, it's just sometimes we have bad days. Seriously, I broke my phone. Just dumb things. Like nothing was even that serious. But sometimes if, and, and we're doing something that's different right now by showing up tonight, by doing this, by putting ourselves out there. Um, it is doing something that's different for the mind. Um, and the brain will try to fight you. The brain will be like, oh, we're not comfortable doing that. And so you'll come up with all these reasons. I just feel crazy. I don't tell myself I don't want to do it. I definitely want to do it. But I just feel crazy for no reason. And I'm like, okay, this is my brain trying to get me to self-sabotage. Really, things like that. There's always going to be resistance when we're trying to rewrite patterns when we're trying to do something new, when we're trying to make decisions for in, in for our future self instead of for our current self, because the decisions that we are making today right now are the decisions that are going to shape our tomorrow or that are going to shape this time next year, the decisions that we make now. So if we, if we can align ourselves with that vision of the future and make our decisions from that place, you know what I mean? Uh, but your, your brain's going to fight you. And your body's going to fight you. They're kind of like PTSD in a way where the body reacts to at the same time in that same trick trauma response. And it's just, um, that's why we have tools. That's why I adore earth magic. That's why I love mindfulness. That's why I use hypnotherapy for a tool. That's why I do all these things because like they're fun to read about. They're cool to know about, but if you're not using them, they're not going to be very helpful. You know, it's, and it's having the presence of mind to use the tool when you feel crazy and you don't feel like focusing on anything. You know, it's really easy to not do it. <clears throat> what were we watching the other night? And somebody said this quote that I had never heard anybody say before, but it hit me like a ton of bricks. They said, when you do spell work or when you do a ritual or a ceremony, what you're doing is you're sacrificing the mind to the heart. And then you're thinking and creating with your heart center. And so it's a, it's, that's what the physical actions of doing a ritual are for to focus your energy so that you can leave your mind, your brains, uh, your one side of your brain's occupied with the doing the things. The other side of your brain is letting the subconscious through, you know, and it's, um, it's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, the quote was, uh, when you sacrifice the mind to the heart, the heart speaks. Well, time is complicated. So yeah, there technically is only really the present, but like we have experienced the past. So it's, you know, but technically it's all happening at once. And so that can get kind of confusing. The present is the only place where you have any power at all. Because if you're not doing something in the present, you can't fix the past. If you're not in, in you can't do anything, but be in, in, when you're in the present, you can fix, you can fix what's going on, but you can't like fix the future. You can't fix the past. You can, um, I think that we can contact past lives. I think that we can speak to our, you know, the a past version of ourselves and future version of ourselves, but it's all done through visualization and the imagination and intuition. It's not something that like, you know, you're actually time hopping. But I also think that through genetics, and I was started to say this last night with the epigenetics, that um, information is passed on and memories from our ancestors are passed on to us in our DNA. And so we have their memories too. And so I feel like some of the decisions we make in our, in our present 
are able to actually make a difference in our past and future and future also and i see them as as parallel realities more than i see them as time right. oh, separated by time and space does that make sense time is non-linear right now all we have that's tangible is the present so there is always only the now there's never there's never really any past. There's never really any future because uh, if, you, if you can tell what's going to happen in the future, if you can predict accurately what's going to happen in the future, then you've already lived it, which becomes the present. So there's there, all we got, our, 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 all, we all we possess, sorry guys, <laughs> all we possess is the now and there will always only ever be the now. Um, that's why I don't believe in this thing called the hereafter, because everything is in the now. The here, like by saying after, it's almost like saying like, well, after you're, well, that means after death. Well, there is no death. Death is a human construct. We we're, we're just talking about transition of energy, and that transition of energy from from one place to another is always in the now too. So there's never any before or after. We just feel like we're experiencing this thing that's happening called life between two infinite darknesses and then you have the whole multiverse theory where you could be there could be infinite parts of your soul that are living their own experience at the same time that you're living this experience right now and so there's that whole having um every decision you make it splits and you have all these other lives like that's uh fascinating i don't have any idea if it's true but it's a fascinating way to to think about it yeah the I've heard some some uh, different beliefs around that, like you know where you, uh, yeah, you spread out, like you, um, you. Uh, <laughs> I can't really think of the terms that they use, but I know, I know fractal. what you mean. It's like you're fract, you're fractal. Become fractalized, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But it's it's co it's complex, though. Um, I don't pretend to know and, the answers. I find this stuff so much and in so interesting that I find it so much fun. Branch, and mm -hmm. it's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my wheels are turning a little bit too fast uh, in my brain tonight. Um, I've been I've been preparing for this all day, so like I'm trying. My mind is moving faster than my mouth. So <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> so just bear with I me, can, please. I can I can be like that too, but this week is not one of the weeks for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're coming up on. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we're almost at fifty minutes already. Um, I know this went fast. <laughs> Oh, thank oh, you. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out with us for the last couple of nights. You guys um, are the best. Seriously, I really have enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed the conversations we've had. I just want to take a few moments and uh, would love to know if you have any questions. I mean, yeah, ask away. Uh, just take uh, just some time. I mean, like, I, if I'd, you guys want, we can set up a Zoom call tomorrow night and talk face to face. That's a suggestion if you guys want to. We didn't have anything planned for tomorrow night. We thought about adding a fourth day. So, like, if you guys want to come back and have another conversation, just let us know. We could totally do that. We're going to be here. Or we could get on a Zoom call together. Whatever you guys want to do. Tonight, what I'm probably going to do is um, I'm probably going to drop. I'm go Actually, I'm going to. I'm going to put the, the uh, description for the Elysian Project, what the offer is and everything. I'm going to put it in the community group. And I'm gonna put it in my other group. I can drop it in this group too. That way, that way you guys can just see um, what's included and everything on paper in front of your face. That way you can take a look. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the doors open for the program for people to enter um, with that, like all the extra features for the founding members that we were talking about. We're gonna do that, and um, I'll just close the doors for that on Sunday, on Saturday night at midnight so that we give people a chance to you know set up some calls with us if they want to and hang out with us you have plans already tomorrow yeah we could do it friday if you want absolutely tomorrow actually we got a bunch of stuff that we could be doing too honestly mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like we're actually working on our business instead of hanging out and having fun even though this is fun <laughs> i'm having a blast but yeah we could totally do that if you guys um want to set up that uh maybe in, maybe a call friday after work or even saturday let us know what's good for you. Um, I can um, I can put the info in the group and try to think of what else. We, if you want, um, 
ask, we could set up a, I could give you a link for a call, uh, for a, a calendar where we're available and you guys can set up a call between now and Saturday night. That would be cool. We could do that or we could just decide now or whatever is good for you guys. If you need some time to figure out what your schedule is going to be like and when you both have time to sit down together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Me too. I'm Me excited. Too. I'm so excited to get creating. Like I can't wait to start creating this. I just wish I wasn't at work like 24 seven, but I just said to Michael before we got on here, I was like, I have to start doing this. So like, I'm going to lock the door and I'm going to just record the videos that I have to record. Like what, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's what happens when you work every day of the week and you don't have a day off. Like you have to take time to do that kind of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. You're full coming up. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I will just, um, I guess, are you guys in the community group? I don't remember if you guys are in the community group or not. Um, I think I have your email though. That's what I could do. I could just email you guys the paperwork on that and you guys can, you know, let us know or whatever. And then we can, uh, we'll be back here in this group um, to do this same thing again, we're probably going to switch it up though and not have the same exact conversations. You know, we'll have different subjects. We'll be doing it in a month from now. We're going to do this again. So yep. yeah, sounds good. Then we'll send you guys an email. We'll put the information in the community group. I'll in this group before we close this out today, uh, because we, we won't come back in this group for a while after until, until we do the next one. But I'll leave the the links for you guys to find everything that we talked about. Um, there's a couple of resources I'm going to leave for you guys. Um, and I'll also leave like the link to the community group if you guys want to go there. And the, yeah. Yeah. The offer for the founding members thing. That way you guys could just look it over. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. I had a freaking blast. I really did. Me too. Me too. Really appreciate the interaction and uh Yeah. Um was there any questions you guys had before we went? I wasn't sure if you heard me ask that. Um, <laughs> but if not, I mean that's okay. We I talk mean... over each other sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we talk over each other sometimes. I just so. wanna I just don't wanna I don't want to leave like, like uh, hop off and have people yeah. be like, well, we had questions. Yeah. I'm just, you honestly, like, I mean, you get, you guys sound like you have been a little bit more, um, a little bit more educated than a lot of the people I've talked to. I, when I used to, when I did podcasts, people were always asking for questions and wanted me to come back on mm -hmm. the podcast after it was over to like give them some one-on-one -on -one time. So like, I, I try not to jump off too quickly. Um, <laughs> no questions. Okay, great. Awesome, uh, well, guys. we appreciate you too. And thank you um, so much for joining us. Seriously, yeah. And like I said, if you guys uh, aren't in the community group, hop in there because every Monday night we're in the community group, and then I have a women's group, Misha, and uh, that I'm in. Um, I I do a ritual live in that women's group and on our our um the th the four winds uh business page. That's where I stream it. I stream it to both places so that they can't see each other's comments. So it keeps the women's private. We do that. Um, yeah. The four wins, the Facebook page and, um, and then the women's, the women's group, I'll put all the links on here on the timeline in here for you guys. But yeah, I do a live ritual every third, every third Sunday of every month. Yeah. yeah. So come hang out. Thanks so much guys for everything. And Mike, if you're here too, thank you so much for joining. And anybody who's watching the replay will probably leave them up till Saturday night. And then we will be back in like three weeks. Yeah. Take care, guys. Have an awesome night.